Well, hello everyone and welcome to this trade management mini session. I'm really excited about this one um, because I have actually spent a lot of time in the postmortem doing an analysis. We took one stock, our example stock happened to be Tesla. We did three different trading strategies on that stock and agreed that we would do a comparison once all those trades were complete. So we got out of two of those three trades yesterday. Uh, the third one we got out very, very quickly on. And so we're going to talk about these three trading strategies and just how this particular example worked out and, and what conclusions we might draw from that, if any. Um, if you are not following me in the land of X, uh, consider this your formal invitation. Um, it's free to participate on this platform. My handle, Barb Armstrong CS. I'm posting lots of great content there that you can tap into on a daily basis. Before we get started, I just wanna remind you that uh, options do carry a high level of risk and aren't suitable for all investors. With Schwab, you have to apply for option trading privileges. We're actually looking at one stock trade and two option trades in this um, mini session today. We traded all of our example trades on the paper money software application on the Thinkorswim desktop platform. It's a brilliant place to learn, to hone your strategies, to do things like what we're talking about today where we can then compare them, where we aren't having to put um, our real uh, money at risk. There are some nuances and differences. Um, for today's webcast, the important thing is that in paper money, a short option will never be assigned early. That can happen in a live account. Okay, so let's get out to the Thinkorswim platform and look at our stock. So the stock is Tesla. As we can see, this is a nine month chart. We can see that Tesla had been on the struggle bus. It was downtrending for months. And then it had this, you know, extraordinary move where it went from $138 back in April to a high of 271. You know, it almost doubled in value um, in, in a relatively short time period. And then it pulled back. And on this particular day, August 16th, we had a diagonal, what we call a diagonal resistance breakout. And so on that day, we placed three trades. We bought some stock, a whopping 12 shares, and we put a target on the stock uh, of basically this previous high. We also bought a call and we had a one ATR target, our ATR being the average true range or the average amount the stock moves in a day. So we had a target there. And then we did a long call vertical and we put that on the same day and our strikes were 215 and 220. So they kind of bracketed where the stock was trading probably when we placed that trade. So how did these work out? Well, when we come to the monitor tab and we're going to come over to analyze, and I have taken us back to the 16th, you can see here that we opened this and I have this sorted by, um, by type of trade. And so the first trade that we did was a, a long call vertical. Okay, and with our long call vertical, and I'm gonna make these all different colors, but with our long call vertical, which is the first trade, we can see that it's a vertical placed on the 16th. Um, our strikes were at that 215 and 220, and we paid 235 to get into that trade. Well, we were in that trade for only four days before we ended up back out. So you can see here on the 20th, it says this is to close this 215 to 220 and we got out for 355. And so if you come over and we do the math on this, this long call vertical, um, how much did we make? Well, we're gonna subtract the 355 that we got out at from the 235 where we got in, which gave us a net gain of $140. Oh, sorry, $120. And we did two contracts, right? So we made $240. 
and our return on risk, because how much could we have lost with this? Well, we could have lost the entire $2.35 per contract that we paid to get in. And so on this one, our return on risk was 120 divided by 235. or right around that 50% mark. It was actually 51%. And so this is exactly what we were hoping for, and we would call that a base hit. But it worked out so well that we said that it hit our target. The next time we met, and you know, this isn't, you know, like your live account where you might be looking at this every day. We said, you know what? This worked out nicely. We're gonna wash, rinse, repeat, and we're gonna do it again. So on the 23rd, we did another vertical. We did another one. And at the same strikes, and the expiration date you can see here, one week later. And so we got into this one for 230. And you can see here that we were in this until September 5th. So and the ironic thing about this, so we got out of this on the 5th, we got out of the other two trades that we placed on the same day. The difference here with the vertical is that we had the opportunity to do what I affectionately call a wash, rinse, repeat. So we got to do a second trade where, and on the second trade, we also did two contracts. And what did we make? Well, on that one, we made you know, two, 370 minus 230, or we made $140. So the second long call vertical, which I'll put here, oops, change my drawing tool. Second long call vertical. And this one was 370 minus 230. Paid a little less, made a little more. So we made 140 on that times two. Or 280. So in total, and our return on risk was actually a little greater. So we, we may have gotten a bit of a paper money fill because we would have put in the same kind of target. It may have gapped up on the open. And our return on this one, when we take the 140 divided by the 230, um, was closer to, it was 60%. So in total on this strategy, we made $520. And in our trading a smaller account, you know, we would call that a, at least a triple, you know, because a lot of our trades we make, you know, 100, 150, 200 dollars on. And, and you know, it's like little win, little win, little win. And that's kind of what we're aiming for. So that was first strategy. Then the second strategy, we, we bought a st stock. And our stop loss was placed so far below where we were entering. And, and we might have, you know, tightened up that stop a bit. We were trying to give it some room to move. We actually could have bought a bigger stock position, because in this account, we can have up to a 25, up to a, a $5,000 position. And, and this was about 2,600 buying 12 shares. But we got in for 216 and it hit our target, which we saw on the chart um, on September 5th. So on our stock, we had 231, which is the price we got out at. And we paid 216, 34. And so when we look at this, what did we make per share? And I've already um, done the math. So that was $14.81 a share. Oops. 14. Please don't die on me now. 
all of a sudden my drawing tool doesn't want to work. Uh, 1481 a share. Let me just go to something else on this. And I'm just going to, I'm just hoping this will help it reset. So that's that one. So 1481 a share times 12 shares. Times 12 shares. And so on the stock, we made $177.72 if you want to get specific. And I'm not taking in this discussion, um, I, I'm not taking the commissions into account which would have given the stock a bit of an advantage because you know with the stock there there are no commissions or transaction fees and then when we're taking a look at what we were risking well we were risking two hundred and sixteen dollars and thirty four cents a shares because technically it could have gone to zero so I'm not going to write all these numbers just because my tool is kind of acting up well now it seems to be doing okay our return on risk was 6.8%. 6.8%. On the entire amount that we invested, not taking the stock into account. But here we made $520. On the stock, we made $177. Now, if we had a, a tighter stop, we could have doubled the position. So we could have maybe made about $350. It still would have been less than our long call vertical. Now, what about the door number three, which is where we bought a call? So here we bought a call, we paid $4.55 for it. We only bought one because we, we could have lost all of that amount. And on the fifth, the same day we got out and, and here on our long call, we made $70. So we're taking our $525 and we're subtracting $455. Now, so we made $70 because we were in this for a couple of weeks. So time decay hurt this one the most. Time decay doesn't really hit our stock at all. And it's more muted on the long call vertical because there's both a long leg and a short leg. And so our return on risk on this one, when we take are 70 and we divide this by the 455 that was and I'm rounding but it was about 15 percent technically I think it was 15.4 percent and it, so still we made 70 dollars here so in total you know this these four trades altogether were pretty profitable. Now, when we look back and do a postmortem, one of the things you say is, did we manage this according to our rules? And, and you know, this is not um, an unimportant thing. And on this one, gold star, we did. On the long call verticals, and there were two of them, we did. But on our long call, we had a one ATR strategy in place, which meant that we should have adjusted our stop. And had we done that, we would not have been in this trade this long. And chances are we might have made more. Now, I didn't go back to think back and back test it. But this one, even though it made money, I would, you know, say this one was not a successful trade only in that if you define success as did this trade follow your rules we didn't follow our rules on this one um, and had we followed our rules our profit might have been a little higher um, and so i'm going to erase this now and we're going to wrap up because i'm trying to keep these somewhat short and sweet but i, I think the at the end of the day the message that came through was if something's moving really bullishly and we can use this long vertical strategy and we have the, uh, uh, you know, the ability to do that wash, rinse, repeat, 
that can work out quite nicely in our favor. Um, of course, if it goes wrong, it can work out and be hurtful quite quickly in our favor too. So we always have to look at the yin and the yang of it. But if we come back to these charts for just a minute, when I talk about mismanaging the trade, with that one ATR strategy, our first um, stop when we place this trade, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of going to be paraphrasing here, but it would have been, say, it would have been, say, around here. And then the next day when it didn't hit the target, we would have moved it up to a dollar below that low. And then the next day when it didn't hit the target, we would have moved it up to a dollar below that low. And this day we would likely have been out. And had we been out on this day instead of this day, all these days of time decay would have been avoided. And I don't know for certain, but my, you know, my expectation is that it may have been a more favorable result. But whether it was more favorable or not, when you go back and, and look at these trades, did you have a trading plan? And did you follow your trading plan? And although these three trades, you know, actually four trades because we did ended up doing two long call verticals were all profitable. We followed our rules on three out of four and, and we learned from, you know, from all of them. So thank you so much for following me. Um, thank you for watching this and hanging in here. And um, I, I will put a link in to the class on August 16th where we placed all these trades. If you want to check out the other mini sessions, I'll put a link in to um, the rest of the, the mini sessions, which include example trading plans and, and, and tips on how to trade on the Thinkorswim platform. Um, this was for example purposes only. I hope you have a really great rest of your day. We'll see you in a webcast coming up soon. Bye for now.